that there was child porn on IRC. One meeting, please. One meeting. Again, when I was informed that there was child pornography on the internet, I was extremely offended and we started an organization that was extremely militant. We started out as the ACPM, the Anti-Child Porn Militia. Within the first three weeks of our organization, we got 300 volunteers. A hundred of those volunteers signed up as hackers. We thought that there was a solution if there's child porn on a server, let the boys go out there, hack the server, remove the information. If there was child porn on an ISP, notify them, have them to remove that information. As you all know, that information is backed up on CDs, other hard drives. That does absolutely no good. When we came here last year to DEF CON, we were looking for hackers. While we were here, one of our board people, one of the people in our organization, said something that I really paid attention to. You cannot stop a felony with a felony. Our main goal is to put these people in prison. That is the only way they're going to stop dispensing child pornography and wounding children and killing children. In order to do that, we had to embrace law enforcement. We now work directly with law enforcement, other organizations such as uh, Missing Children, FBI, U.S. Customs, UNESCO. One of the things that we've done with our hacking community is we've redirected their energy. And they now are building tools to help us fight child pornography. We have one tool in particular that goes out and spiders out child porn on the internet. We are refining that tool according to law enforcement's requirements to do a better job. If we send in all the reports we get of child pornography, they cannot deal with it. It's overwhelming. But if we refine those reports and do part of their job to make their job easier, we have better equipment, we have more time, we have more bandwidth, then they can do their job better. We are now a non-for-profit organization. We have a structure. We have a board of directors. If you go to our website, look at their bios. We have businessmen. We have actually two, two parts to ACPO. We have ACPO and we have Team ACPO. Team ACPO is made up of our programmers and our developers. ACPO, board of directors, myself, go through background checks. Anybody dealing directly that close with our organization goes to background checks. Our coders do not. A few of them do because they're working on specific tools, so we have to check who we're dealing with. Well, at this point, I think what I'm going to do, we also have a huge liaison program all over the United States, all over the world. Uh, one of the goals of the liaisons is to look for law enforcement contacts. This is Deep Quest. Uh, he's our French liaison and our European representative. Hi, uh, hi everyone. Uh, as she told you, I'm coming from from France. Uh, I'll take care of the uh, take care of the uh, European part of uh, ACPO because this child porn thing is not only a, uh, a disaster in in America, but also over Europe, where we do have like a lot of. Uh, child porn, not only website, but a really well organized system. Uh, one of my job in uh, with ACPO is to take care not only uh, to get contacts, like for example, we get really good contacts at the UNESCO, uh, because we are an official, uh, as Natasha said previously, uh, with a non-profit status. Now it's like a real organization, not only a website, and we're trying to build like a big network of contacts in official. Uh, agency all over Europe because uh, it's really important to to take care of this part of the uh, of the uh, of the continent. Uh, the other thing is um, about the team ACPO as Natasha said previously. 
we do have uh, many programmers who, who join us directly by our website uh, because we're trying to build a lot of tools um, different, uh, in different language, running on different platforms, we can use to automatize the maximum of the task. Because we went like, when we started two years ago, from single copy and paste from a submission from the website uh, to now feeding directly databases uh, with all the information, all those reports we get from website, from emails. And it saves a lot of time. It, it will help us to be more efficient on the result and all the information we will grab from those, uh, from those reports. The other part uh, for Team ACPU is to build some kind of donation where is uh, to make some software running on different operating system uh, that family will be able to use at home just to make sure the kids are surfing uh, and don't see this kind of, uh, of pictures or this kind of, of website. Uh, so that's one of the biggest uh, plan we got at this time is to release uh, one of the person across platform software uh, to filter uh, not only with keyboard, not only with keywords but with other technical uh, parts uh, to prevent this from happening to to, to kids. Uh, so we're working on this, and that's why we need some programmers uh, for this team ACPO. No matter of the skills you have, it depends because we we not focus on any language at this time to to build this kind of of software or. Uh, any people with C++, with Perl, with any language would be really helpful, helpful to, uh, for us, uh, to us. For the website part, for making the softwares, uh, for creating those databases, and um, I think there's a lot of a lot of job to do on this part. Uh, the other point is uh, about our needs. Of course, we need some not only uh, software, not hardware, uh, but we need bandwidth. At this time, all our information are gathered on computers around the world. One of the main aim is to get local and small and pretty secure uh, network operation center with dedicated line uh, database system, uh, like regular network operation system uh, center. Sorry. Uh, so as a non-profit organization, at this time, uh, we're able to receive donations uh, from companies, uh, from, from any people, and it already helps us a lot, this, uh, I don't know what's the word, it's in America, it's the 501c3, that's the technical word for the non-profit. Um, there's a lot of... A lot of things to do with uh, ACPU if you have uh, programming skills, if you have skills at all. We don't ask for anyone uh, to work like 20, 24 hours a day. If they just want to spare some time with us, if they feel like doing it, everyone is welcome, really. Thank you, David. Um, and we also, um, as one of our board of directors likes to put it, we're kind of an umbrella that has uh, met with other organizations uh, doing basically the same thing we're doing, trying to stop child porn on the internet. We have a sister organization in Germany, Anti-Kinder Porno DE, who met with us at Myrtle Beach in law enforcement. Uh, they've been around for about six years. We have a group in Denmark that we're closely associated with. And at this time, I'd like to introduce you to Will Oxley from... You never get it right. I don't. I get locks from <laughs> condemn.org. I'm R. Loxley. Um, this is Blueberry. This is our Australian component. Um, some of you may know me as kind of the hacker contingent, and uh, we started exactly like they did. We didn't call ourselves a militia, although if I had thought of it, we probably would have. Um, we figured that, uh, and, and it was really blue and Vort, uh, the other people from Australia, that started this. They brought up a website, and they knew that I was out there doing it anyway. And they said, uh, hey, you, you're old. you got a big mouth. You want to come and help? And uh, <laughs> so we kind of got in bed together right away. And um, we started in the same way. We started going out, and uh, right on the website it says, we take child pornographers off the net in any way we can. What's the exact wording? It's about eight. Yeah, 
any way we can. Um, well, I got hooked up, uh, some of you know the name Most Hated, uh, unfortunately now in jail. Um, but one of the good things that he did was introduce me to Natasha and her crew. And she said to us, well, you guys are going through what we went through about, um, you know, what was it, a year and a half, two years ago? And after many screaming phone calls uh, in the middle of the night and uh, you know her sitting me down and, uh, and in the channel and saying uh, you know you need to listen um, I finally came to the realization that as much as I hate to admit it she's right and um, our group now is a hundred percent legitimate however um, we do have a lot of people that come to us and say, listen, we found these sites, uh, what do you want us to do? And we tell them, we want you to report them on the site and we will take care of them. Now, unfortunately, and I'm hoping my law enforcement contact next to, next to me doesn't shoot me, but uh, unfortunately they don't have uh, as much bandwidth as we do, they don't have as much time. So. What we find is that they'll go and they'll look at the site three or four times, these hackers, and if it's not gone, a lot of the time they take it down themselves. Now, I will not go out and, uh, let me step back. When they come to me, I'll always advise them about the law, as I understand it, and I just kind of got my head handed to me. I didn't understand one piece of it. Um, I've always felt that it was morally right to do this, morally right to go and you know, yeah, it is a felony to per perpetrate a felony, but something that I was missing was that when we go out there and we hack these sites, a lot of the time we're stealing evidence from people like them who are in a legitimate investigation trying to put these people in jail. And this is what Natasha has been screaming at me about for about the last six months. So I will not go out and tell a hacker not to hack a pedophile site, but I will tell them what the legalities are, why you shouldn't do it, and explain to them what the consequences are, potential consequences, um, which I just got schooled on this morning. It was kind of pretty embarrassing. Um, but if it's a choice between hacking NASA and a pedophile site, I think everybody knows what recommendation I'm going to give them. Um, for us, it's been a hard transition because the people that I deal with uh, are hackers. They're people that want to go out, they want to hack things, and they want it to be something that morally right, they can kind of jump on the bandwagon and do something that they can, they can perform an act of conscience, which they still do. Now, I'm trying to change that. Um, I'm not recruiting, don't need any, any bandwidth, don't need web space, don't need anything. We have all of that. Uh, all I'm saying is that get involved. You know, whether, you know, we don't, yeah, sure, everybody needs money, but we're not looking for that either. If you know a congressman, senator, anything like that, write them a letter and say to them, listen, these guys are right. They need to, uh, the, the congressmen and senators need to start changing some of the laws uh, to give them teeth. One of the things that, uh, Natasha, I'm really surprised with your mouth that you didn't bring this up. Um, there is a particular law that we have been looking at and we're now actively in the process uh, of trying to change. If somebody goes out and, and rapes a child, uh, they can get 10 to 20 years. If that person is related to that child, generally they get probation. We find that unacceptable. You know, by definition, a child trusts that family member, and we find it very difficult to set that type of a precedent to a child. And nobody knows that. That's the thing. So that's one example. Please just get on the phone. If you know senators, congressmen, just in your home states, just write them a letter and say, go look at condemn.org and see if you can help us. That's all. That's all I ask. And uh, did you want to say anything? This is Blueberry. Hopefully you can understand her accent. Hi. Um, I just want, I've had a thought that I really think the industry should start regulating itself. I'm talking about the people who run web hosting services. Yeah. I think that unless people who start filtering their, their own content look at what they're putting online before they just put it up, otherwise we're looking at censorship down the line, you're giving governments reasons to install software that prohibits people viewing things, we're not for censorship. With the industry starting to look at what they're putting online, if they stop putting it out there, we, ha we don't have to take it down anymore. I mean, sure they're going to move to somewhere else, perhaps an easier place for us to catch them online, like IRC, you know? So if any of you guys are web hosting, check your content first, please, please. Boy, I didn't think you were going to say anything. Uh, on that note, back to you, Nat. Uh, thank you for listening.
And uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Detective Mark Latterman, and he'll tell you more about himself. My name is Mark Lanterman. I'm a detective from Minneapolis, and I'm currently assigned to the Minnesota High Tech Crime Task Force. Yeah, I can't believe no one spotted me. It's my fed. Anyway, uh, I can certainly appreciate the frustration that several uh, that several uh, attendees of this convention have regarding uh, hacking child porn uh, websites. However, I do have to caution you that uh, if I am investigating a crime, if I am investigating unauthorized computer access in the state of Minnesota, it is punishable by a five-year felony. And that's to start with. I don't have to show intent. I don't have to show damage. I have to show access. That's very easy for me to do. So I just want to caution you about doing that. I certainly appreciate uh, the morals behind doing this. I certainly appreciate why someone would want to go ahead and do this. And if I wasn't in law enforcement, I don't know what I would be doing about it. Yeah, just, uh, I just don't want to see someone with good intentions uh, get in more trouble than what they realize could have, uh, could have happened to them. Also, uh, I do want to keep this brief, so I just want to touch on one other topic. There's this misperception that if someone wants to report uh, child pornography on the, web, uh, on, the, uh, on the internet, that they want to go to the feds right away. Well, believe it or not, your local and state authorities have much more uh, authority in dealing with these crimes than the feds do. And I, I tell you that firsthand as quite often federal agencies come to me asking for assistance in Minnesota. So you know, I don't want to tell you folks don't go to the feds if you want to report something, but certainly try your local and state authorities first also. Thank you. But if you do find it, report it. At this point, we are going to open it to questions and answers. Yes, ma'am. We wanted to keep this real brief because we know it's the end of the show. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's one of the things that we're doing uh, with Team ACP. She wants to know how we're going to know where the website is. That's one of the things that Team ACP has done is written a script now. So all our reports run through a process and not only do we give them the URL but we give them the DNS, the IP, who is, all the other information we can. The next step of that, and that goes off to uh, NITMIC, uh, Missing Children, Customs, and the Feds. After that, if we find that the site is in Alabama, then if you're the Alabama liaison, you will have given us law enforcement connections in Alabama. It will be sent to them also. Go, Phil, go. I can actually speak fairly loudly if you want. Um, I'm curious, can you, you can only do things about uh, sites here in the United States, right? I mean, no. 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 That's, uh, really? Yeah, for we have law enforcement contacts in a lot of different places in the world. We are by no means to where we should be in terms of, uh, of our contacts. So if you know somebody, we need help. And we'll never have enough because it's it's such a global problem. Uh, I'm, Matt, you can kick me if I talk to you. Go ahead. But it's such a global problem that people just don't understand. It's everywhere. And for every site we take down, you know, 10 are put back up. That's so. why the time delay is so important with law enforcement as well. If you're looking at eight weeks before they even view on the site to get it, it's too long. It's too long. Laws have to be changed. It has to come down really fast. It's like the week. You've got 20,000 people downloading those images, putting them straight back up. So you can really please try and lobby, lobby, lobby to get, really get law enforcement well, this is to cut things. down these times. Well, this is one of the things that we're doing too, is we're going to address the There are people out there, I didn't know, I knew there was porn out there, but I didn't realize it was child porn. Uh, and there's a lot of people that don't realize it's child porn. There's old ladies with computers. Um, grab, the, grab the mic. Oh, I think you can hear me, can't you? No. The 
other thing Blue had said too about uh, ISPs, we do have a letter that is ready to go out to the ISPs, but because of the process and staying legal, that has to go through all of the board of directors that goes to, that has actually gone to the feds, and that will go out to ISPs now addressing that problem. Something else I wanted to say too, um, we were sent some information to send over to law enforcement. We were sent 11.5 megs of text off of a uh, child porn BBS. I spent three hours deleting inf information that someone in their good intentions had tried to crash that BBS and shut it down. It took me three hours. I had to send it to a professional organization da database. It took them another five hours before we, before we could even start to look at this information to send to the FBI. So a lot of times, like it was mentioned before, and then the evidence that we had gotten before, they did eventually shut this BBS down and a couple others. We lost the evidence that we had ready for law enforcement. So um, from my point of view, please, if you know of a site, report it. If you have a problem, you know, mail. Uh, don't shut down these uh, these. Some of them are being watched. And that's, that's another point uh, we agree because uh, ACPO and condemn.org, I mean, we, we don't have to forget that the, the main aim is exactly the same, is to prevent, to take the child porn from, the, to take out the child porn from the internet. After, we won't argue about the, the way we will do it, it's different organization, but I'm, there is something for sure is we won't cross our, we will cross maybe sometime our our roads on several sites and that's why exchanging information uh, it's not because it's two different organizations that we won't speak to each other that's why today we are sit as we are at the same table is to make sure we don't make them waste some time on the site or if they, they don't do it they don't make us waste some time on the, on the site we're working on and this is really important uh, to get those kind of contact with all those kind of uh, with all those organizations Yeah, that's, that's another example. Uh, we also, at the time of ACPM, something like a year ago, uh, one of my friends, Calvin Williams, uh, from a H Ape, a Ethical Hacker Against Pedophilia. The ex-Packet Storm, Ken Williams. Yeah, also known as Packet Storm. Working, uh, we were working on a Russian site, like Alpha Pix, because uh, when we're talking about child porn, just forget the 10 years kids, we're talking about three or four years babies having sex with adults. And we're trying to do the maximum to, to grab information and to work on this case. And I just mail him to know if he had some information and everything. And he just told me, mail me back like a few minutes after he said, the request, just stop it. We're working on this case for at least six months with Interpol, which is uh, the equivalent of, uh, uh, of a federal agency in Europe, but uh, working uh, all over Europe. And uh, I mean, they've been working six months. And if we start up to, to work on this case without uh, trying to get information or anything, I mean, all their work would have been, what's the word? For destroyed yeah, for nothing for nothing that's why it's really important we we we're still in contact with uh, with all those organizations much as I hate to admit it hacking these sites uh, does destroy evidence doesn't put the people in jail doesn't allow them to be Bubba's girlfriend in jail and so uh, it deprives me of a great pleasure of knowing that they're in there for a long time really suffering and they p can't put their poison back up on the net so as much as I hate to admit it with my kind of checkered past um, they're right yes sir unfortunately in the previous session, the gentleman said that it took him three hours to detect who put out the love bug virus. Why does it take you people six months to get one of these sites that everybody's looking at it all day long? Yeah, the thing is, what I was saying about this, uh, you're talking about the Russian site I was talking about? Yeah. Uh, the thing is, uh, on the child porn thing, I mean, first when, when I... Uh, when we created, when Natasha created the uh, ACPM, I saw that was some kind of grandpa having a big couple of bits of uh, porn, uh, child porn on their hard drive. But several cases showed us that it's a real mafia behind this. It's a well organized network of child porn. Uh, some people say previously, 
if we shut down the site, it's going to be restored. What it means is it's backed up. They have several servers. And I mean, it's a very well organized. And what they try to do on this case is to introduce and send some agents directly in Russia to get into this network, because this is a real mafia. Yeah, you can't, uh, unfortunately, in some cases, you can't jeopardize your life uh, to go after these sites. You have to find a way to get the site down without being killed. So, go ahead. If I may, a second. Uh, just to go to your question, uh, the Lovebug virus, uh, they also have databases of what people have done. This guy was previously up on the radar. What's going on now is pretty much we're way behind on that level of having information about people and who they are. Someday we would love to be there. Um, and really that's what's starting to generate now with the work Natasha's doing and uh, Loxie's doing with generating this information, tracking down and setting up these data warehouses for, for the lack of a better term. Hmm.